there. Perfect. Thanks for joining us. There's a few people signed on already. Thank you. We're just getting uh, live here. Greg, Jason, Martin. Hey, Martin, it's been a while. Um, hope you're doing well. Oh, I got um, YouTube hopping in here on one of my windows, so it's uh, I can hear myself about 20 second delayed, <laughs> which is a little bit <laughs> annoying. <laughs> Found mm. it. It's good. <laughs> That, that drives me crazy when I'm on a call and there's some feedback. It's very difficult to rehear it and delay. I don't know why. Yeah. I mean, uh, you're listening. You're like, what? Anyway, so uh, how are things? Like, um, Dominic and uh, Fred, where are you uh, physically located? Um, well, I'm in I'm in Montreal. I'm in the, the, the heart of the island uh, located in the Plateau Mont Royal um, in Quebec. Myself, I represent more of the, the Anglo part. I'm in the West Island uh, in Montreal, Beaconsfield to be precise, but yeah, still in the Montreal area. Yeah, we. Uh, I'm just outside of Toronto and just, just checking the news before we got on. Looks like uh, our premier is announcing even more restrictions. We went in lockdown. Now I guess he's going to announce today a stay-at-home order and um, even more stuff is going to close. So... Uh, how are things in your, uh, what are the rules out where you are? <laughs> um, in Quebec, last time I checked, they just closed gyms again in Montreal, uh, but uh, we haven't had been able to have people over for a long time. So not much really changes in Montreal. Some other regions aren't faring as well as we do, uh, but uh, um, we, can, we can see people outside, which with the weather getting better is definitely a big, big help. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, when you start seeing people outside, it's really nice. How about yeah. you, Dominic? Is it the same? Very same situation. I think we were hopeful. And fortunately, yesterday, we got a little bit of a setback there with an announcement that gyms would be going um, in shutdown again. But uh, on my end, I'm trying to be active outside. The weather allows us these days. So definitely that helps. And meeting with people for a walk or for a bike ride does the trick until we hopefully can gather soon in person again. Definitely. I'm, uh, I'm going a little stir crazy and, uh, I don't know, 30 day stay at home order or whatever they're going to announce is, um, I guess it's just getting outside and doing your exercise. And I've been doing exactly that in April and trying to ramp up to get up to 10 K a day. So that's awesome. Not there, not there yet. <laughs> I can tell <laughs> to the 10 K, but yeah, not quite there yet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we want to make this as interactive as possible sure. uh, for everybody who's here on in the chat room and on YouTube live. So we're going to have some questions, but I also want to make sure everyone knows we are recording this. It, this is live. Um, when we are doing the search, we're going to ask you stuff about, you know, what industry you're in, postal code and stuff. If you don't want to say your postal code for whatever reason, I mean, it's your business. I don't know why you wouldn't, but, you know, we can default to Toronto or something else. Um to help you out there but don't be shy i just want to make sure everyone's aware we are the the video will stay up and you know um just like if you're pitching um, one of our events of these live we record them and they stay up or uh getting advice and whatnot so we do want to make it as interactive as possible um you can make your stuff anonymous in in the chat room if you want so we don't know who it is and that's fine but other than that we if you want to know what funding is available for you and your industry and how to use the tool we want your examples does that make sense yeah, that's perfectly cool. We also prepared some uh, sort of gener generic profiles for some uh, big startup industries. So uh, we'll, we'll also have those ready in case uh, we, pe people want to start start with that kind of an example. So whatever people are most comfortable with, but we always love giving those those demos to with actual real companies and finding people that funding. So yeah, I also find we get a little bit more uh, participation if we kind of prep people ahead of time. Say, so, oh, great, maybe they'll do a search on my industry. I'm in, you know, mining in Alberta and doing this. Great, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what people are doing. We'll find out a little bit today. And we've got a little bit of a presentation on what you, uh, the uh, Fundica and the tool. And I had uh, Mike Lee on a panel last week, a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And he didn't uh, at any point uh, correct me because I was pronouncing Fundica rather than Fundica. <laughs> and I, uh, I don't know. It's been a year. I, I, uh, I get that wrong. So forgive me for that. Um, 
we might as well get started. I just, before we do that, I just want to mention to people who are here, we got a couple other quick things coming up. I just wanted to mention, um, let me get my spreadsheet up here so I can tell you what's going on. Investor speed dating is happening April 22nd uh, this month. The website will be updated to reflect that date um, this afternoon. For those who don't know, it's our uh, investor speed dating and open mic networking event. Basically, we usually have two investors in breakout rooms and in the main room. We're just talking about our startups, giving advice, doing this and that. Um, and it's kind of replacing our startup drinks event because we can't get together uh, like we used to uh, and everyone used to pitch. So we do that once a month to get people a chance to talk to investors and next step and start making those connections they need. We're also doing one-on-one -on -one mentoring. If you're looking for funding, talking about cap tables, wondering what the next step is for your startup, we're doing that. We do that every month, and this month it's Friday, uh, April 23rd, so look for that link. Uh, most of those links are updated already, that one. And our startup pitch battles, our monthly pitch competition, uh, and that will be April 29th. So those are a few things we've got coming up. I wanted everyone to be aware of those, and all those will be posted by the end of today. But right now... I wanted to welcome everyone to Finding Startup Funding with our friends from Fundica. How are you, Fred and Dominique? Uh, pretty good. Uh, doing, pretty good. Doing great. Thanks for having us on, Craig. It's great to have you, and um, it's great to be um, working with you guys again. Uh, we, you know, It's been a year uh, since you know, we were doing live events. And then a little bit of time before that, before the Fundic Roadshow, I remember we were doing some prep when you were doing it in Toronto not too long ago. And I always uh, I gave presentations out a couple of few years ago and it was always great uh, when you were in town and to work with you. But now that we're virtual, I guess we can work a little bit more often because we don't have all the travel costs and whatnot. So hopefully we'll be seeing a little bit more of you. So why don't you, I'm not sure who's going to take over, but why don't you tell us about what Fundica does and how do they help startups? Um, so I guess, I guess I can, I can go into this and I could actually start sharing my PowerPoint because that's something that we're going to kind of get into. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, the way we've prepared this is that we do have the, the demo, uh, coming up, um, you know, uh, after we go through this short quote, kind of little intro and we have some, some best practices to share with the startup founders, uh, that are watching this today. Um, so Fundica essentially is a funding research tool. Um, that helps entrepreneurs uh, find funding. It's free to use for entrepreneurs. And uh, we've recently launched uh, new solutions for financial institutions and governments, uh, as well as uh, financial advisors to be able to um, offer the service to more entrepreneurs and make it more accessible and um, offer it to more people so that more businesses ultimately can find funding and prosper. So uh, that's that's the gist of Fundica, I guess. Uh, and it's a free tool, uh, like I said, and um, entrepreneurs can access it like we're going to show you today. Um, Fabulous. So we might as well just jump into the presentation. Sounds, sounds good. Unless you had something else that needed to come first. That's, that's not, at all. Abs not at all. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Um, so just quick introductions uh, before we jump into it. So my name is Frédéric Menard. Uh, I'm a funding analyst and content marketer at uh, Fundica. Uh, so that means that I take care of both of taking care of the platform and doing these kinds of things uh, like we do today, uh, a lot of our, of our content, um, and um, I kind of have that foot in both worlds uh, where um, I stay up to date on the funding that's available for businesses in Canada, but um, also uh, taking care of that, communicating that to entrepreneurs. Um, and uh, Dominic, I guess I'll let you introduce yourself. Sure. Thank you for teaming up, Frederic. Um, yeah, my name is Dominic Klein. I'm working as the business development manager. And again, I have a background in, in mostly sales in the software industry, as well as in management consulting. And yeah, I think important here to mention is uh, why you see two logos, usually the Fundica and the R&D Partners logo. I think it's important for the audience to understand that we work uh, as sister companies, uh, having shared um, shareholders, so to speak. And I think that's kind of important to preface the meeting today. However, the focus and spotlight is on Fundica and how to how to use it hands-on later on as we go through the demos. Yeah, so maybe just uh, move on. Fred, I'll say a few words to our founder who I just referred to as a shared, uh, let's say, um, president of the two um, entities, Fundica and RD Partners. Mike, who was on recently with Crack, I think in a couple occasions, was also, let's say, the, the initiator of the Fundica Roadshow in the past. So some of you might know him. 
Um, I think important is that Mike has yeah, plenty of experience and so does his team in the, in the funding space and maximizing non-dilutive funding options. A couple of stats that speak for, them, for themselves. I think it's closer to a 300 million by now in terms of uh, money uh, funds basically claimed and, and refunded to one of our, to our customers and also lots of entrepreneurs signed up on the Fundica platform. So quickly, we'll go through this uh, part of the presentation rather quickly, but these are some of the best practices we like to share with startup funders uh, when they start their uh, funding uh, research journey. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll just get started quickly. We've already touched on this, but uh, Fundica and your partners will function as sister companies, as Dominique said. And uh, we offer two different sides of the solutions that are possible for funding for entrepreneurs that are looking to uh, scale up their businesses and get more uh, money coming in to develop their their great projects and put them out into the world. Um, so on Fundica, we really cover all the funding available for all the industries in Canada. Essentially, is our is our goal, our 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 big thing. I think it's um, our official stat is ninety seven percent of uh, the funding in Canada uh, repertoriated on the or sort of represented on the platform. There might be some French that kind of still influences the way I talk. I apologize for that. I'm, I tried to catch myself, but it's, it is what it is when you're bilingual. <laughs> um, and uh, essentially, so on, uh, on Fundica, our team is mostly uh, a group of developers, data scientists. Uh, we call ourselves the data team. We take care of upkeeping the platform, making sure that we add new funding programs when there are new ones and keeping the ones we do have up to date. Um, and uh, we also offer, as I mentioned earlier, uh, some new uh, solutions that we license to funding uh, fin financial institutions, uh, governments, and uh, advisors, uh, amongst others, uh, to help more entrepreneurs find more funding for their companies. And uh, to add to this on the R&D partner side, which is kind of, I'd say, secondary in terms of the sequence, I'd say most of our customers and let's say uh, our ecosystem starts on the Fundica side, looking for funding solutions, uh, will we'll really test it out. The tool itself is often the starting points. And then as you go into the scale up stage where you're actually incurring some costs, uh, we come in on the R&D partner side that I represent today, more on the advisory, let's say, um, services um, things, as well as, um, yeah, helping you really like providing direction, helping you to, to explore available tax credits as well as grants. And the team consists mostly of two, two sides of uh, expertises. One is the engineering and the, the background basically to understand the technology behind. And then also we need, of course, to make sure that we have the financial expertise on board as well as the tax expertise. And then you add a bit of, uh, let's say, uh, more of a sales uh, and relationship driven person like, to, like myself, and then it makes it a team at the R&D partners. Um, business. So yeah, I think that's, that's it for the two business models. Thanks, Dom. Ah, there you go. My screen was frozen there. Um, so the next thing that we want to cover quickly is um, sort of the funding cycle. Uh, so this is where we get more into the uh, startup uh, side of things where um, we like to show this graph when we need these presentations because I think we think it's important for, for entrepreneurs to understand that you can't, there, there is a, a way to do this that is that we tend to recommend. Let's say it's not something that's set in stone. It's something that some, some businesses may skip some of the steps that you see on the screen right now. That is generally the way that we consider uh, uh, startups should approach funding. Uh, the funding cycle, and uh, that will be reflected in the way that if you go and create a, fund a Fundica account uh, after this, I think you should look for funding according to that order, depending on where you are in your company's journey. Um, so the first couple steps are kind of seem kind of self-explanatory, but it's that a, you, if you don't have a, a viable product and a possible market fit, then that's pr it's probably not going to go anywhere, right? But once that's established, one of the first things that uh, we recommend is that people grow their team. One of the big reasons for that is that there's a number of government loans and programs or even with financial institutions when you're looking at uh, traditional funding where they'll have requirements, for example, that you need a certain number of employees on payroll already. Um, so that is something that can uh, hold up uh, businesses sometimes in their journey. Sometimes it's not a problem. You can have uh, tech companies that go really far with two, with the two co-founders, but uh, you always need to grow your team eventually to be able to scale up, right? So we recommend to do it in, earlier in the process. And there are some programs that will help you do that. And we'll talk about them later. Um, 
The next part is often it takes money to get money, uh, which is why we, we recommend that people look at some cash in hand solutions, look at getting, if it's an industry that's um, um, a, a good fit for that, looking for angel investors or doing some uh, bootstrap uh, the, uh, fundraising, trying to uh, find some initial capital injections that will help you uh, start your journey faster and better. Um, the next thing we get into the actual proper funding, which is we recommend that people go from government funding, whether it's a, a loan or a grant, as long as it comes from the government, uh, then looking at traditional bank funding and uh, finally going on to uh, VC and um, um, individual investors. Uh, there's some, some reasons for that that uh, I can get into. Um, a little bit earlier. Of course, there's tons of tech startups that are going to go, we're going to skip the traditional bank loan and they're going to go straight to the VC and the big angel investor and the big seed round and then series A. Obviously that happens. We just like to recommend that people take all of those steps into consideration when they're looking for that funding because you shouldn't overlook any of these. Um, as I was saying, so the different types of funding, I'm not going to read this whole uh, table, but some in important things to note about different types of funding. Um, the government funding that we're looking at mostly uh, in terms of tax credits, grants, and public loans. Um, and the big advantages of government funding is that it often comes with the least strings attached in terms of either giving up company ownership or uh, when you when you take a, when you, you 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 go for equity funding, for example, that's something that happens, right? Uh, the reason that we recommend government programs first is because often, if there are repayment terms, they will be generous uh, and uh, have low interest rates, or there won't be repayment terms at all, and it will be a grant, um, and you don't have to give up any equity. So that is one reason we really like to encourage people to look for that government funding before anything else. Uh, if that's an option that exists for their industry and their company. Um, next, the other thing that you can keep in mind, so now we've talked about the types of funding, it's where is that funding going to go? Because you're going to have grants for growing your workforce as much as you're going to have grants for marketing, but you're also going to have tax credits for your research and development expenditures, but you can also have hiring tax credits, right? So all of these things intersect in those ways. Um, and this is um, one of the ways that we filter programs on Fundica with our, our secondary filters, it's the purpose that the funding is going to be attributed to. Uh, so we like to bring these uh, categories to people's attention. So essentially where your money is going to go most likely will be in these four categories, which is um, wage subsidies or hiring incentives of different kinds, uh, some training initiatives as well uh, when you're, you're trying to um, upscale your existing employees. Um, or team members. Uh, product development is going to include everything related to R&D, especially the, the shred tax credit, which we'll touch on a little bit later. Um, marketing, uh, it's going to be everything that's related to export uh, and uh, often will come with some uh, interesting programs. A lot of um, programs for that in Canada for, um, actually, no, the CMF just retired its export program. So I was going to say something that is incorrect. So yeah, unfortunately for creative industries, the export program from the CMF I think is no longer available. Um, but um, for, for a lot of creative industries, Telefilm Canada has some, some, some interesting export programs, for example. Um, and then finally, we have our capital expenditures, everything related to uh, buying or leasing commercial property or big equipment pieces, which is uh, a form of funding that's always very useful. And then how those things sort of order themselves in the stage of a company, we'd like to bring it up uh, in this order. Again, it's not set in stone. These are just things that we uh, sort of recommend as a best practice, as the baseline of the knowledge of the funding cycle. And then you do you do what you need to do with it. Um, you'll notice something that we haven't talked about yet, or which are accelerators and we're including incubators in here. Um, types of programs that have become very, very popular in the last few years uh, for accompanying those, those uh, startups that uh, can benefit from um, coaching, mentoring, and sometimes not always they'll offer direct funding, uh, sometimes in exchange for equity, but um, not always. So the right incubator accelerator, if it makes sense for a company, can really, really uh, change the game. Uh, I've seen it uh, from personal experience of the people that I know in my life. Uh, it's not right for every company, but if it's right for your company, it could be a really, really good move. Um, and then the other ones that we're seeing here, um, 
was exactly the, ca the categories I was talking about um, earlier. And you can see that you're really moving from building your workforce, uh, like we said, build your team first um, earlier and into developing your product, exporting your product, and then getting that big facility, that uh, big piece of equipment, those capital expenditures. So a quick recap on those best practices. We really recommend that people look at government funding first, then banks, then VCs, uh, basically going in the number of least strings attached to most strings attached to that money that you are getting to, to older companies' growth. Um, other things that we haven't really touched on is that, especially when you're talking to um, an individual uh, investor or if you're preparing a grant application, those are things that you really need to tailor to that program. It's not a one size fits all. It's like that advice that they give for you know, write a whole CV and a whole cover letter for each job that you apply to. That logic applies to funding as well. Uh, if they don't offer a, for, a formal like application already, still do your research and target the funder uh, specifically, prepare your application uh, and make it a killer application, a killer pitch uh, is what we, we like to call it, but that is the truth. Um, if you don't put the effort in, the uh, application may not go through. And I think that that's just a fact. These things take a lot of effort and time, but they can be worth it. Um, the win-win relationship much more uh, for individual investors, VCs, things like that, still all goes into building those relationships with funders and, and people. Um, and uh, move, don't, don't let go. Don't uh, to try to keep, stay, stay on your toes and uh, move it, move it to, to its, its uh, conclusion. Um, sometimes things we, we all know, especially in the remote world right now, it's easy to get to lose track of an email in your inbox. Um, and sometimes it's an email you didn't want to lose track of, but um, it still happens. Things come in all the time. So be, be, be proactive and move, move that deal to a close, I guess, is the final advice we would give startup founders. So I'll just uh, pass it on to uh, Dom quickly to talk about one of the flagship funding programs in Canada and uh, one of our new partners of specialties, the uh, Scientific Research and Experimental Development Tax Credit Program. Thank you, Fred. And yeah, keeping an eye on the, on the chat, it's quite busy, which is good to see. And also, of course, I don't yet know the audience. I hope we get to know it very soon. So I don't want to kind of distract the focus here. So really, like she said, this is one of our flagship programs. It's basically a a uh, federal program that the Canadian government uh, has issued to really incentivize innovation and leadership in Canada to, to make sure that uh, R&D is performed here. I think it's uh, one of the most attractive programs worldwide, also kind of underlining the innovation focus. And uh, the beautiful thing is here is really it's not cap, meaning once you qualify, um, you basically, if you have eligible expenses and you know how to claim, and that's where we come in with our expertise to help you get structured because it takes a couple of steps. But again, this would be more of a, I'd say a, a company that has already incurred costs. I'm not aware yet how the audience is, let's say, looking today. So don't want to lose too much time on this one, but rather make you aware that this is a program we'd be happy to, let's say, get in touch. If you hear about the so-called SHRED or SRED, SRED program, Scientific Research Educa Experimental Development, then uh, talk to us in that sense on the R&D partner side. But for now, let's, let's move on, Fred, to the next slide, just to kind of give a high level overview about the industries. I think important here is really to understand that wherever you fit in here, and again, we will find out very soon what types of industries you'll be covering when we do a couple of hands-on uh, Fundica searches, but uh, chances are that you fall in one of those categories. So then be aware, uh, let's say once you have salaries, once you have some, over, some other expenses material related, for example, then um, these are relevant, let's say, um, costs that we could hopefully then credit against in the future once we look into those programs. In terms of activities, I think one thing I want to emphasize here on this slide is really that we're looking for core R&D and support R&D activities rather than commercializing and, and, and the finding the product market fit and, and let's say accumulating marketing spend. That's not necessarily uh, eligible activities and also costs we can credit against, but rather it is on the left-hand side, as you see here, when it comes to the actual research performed, the engineering part portion where you hit uncertainties, where you really try to push the envelope a little further and to, let's say, hit the, as we call it, the technological wall where things aren't going as planned. That's where most likely where you have a couple of, let's say, credits where, um, tax credits waiting for you from the Canadian government to keep you going in that sense and to maybe 
give you a bit more runway. But we want to maybe one message I want to send out here. No business has been built, I think, only on those programs. It's important that you get to uh, whatever you're trying to achieve without being distracted by those. It's rather an add-on. And of course, it is important to not have to dilute early on in the process. I think that's kind of what she, what Frederick explained in the best practices earlier. Um, so this is how it ties into it. Yeah, that, that, uh, that's a good overview of the program. I think one other thing is that it ties into something else that I was saying, which is that we advise that you grow your team earlier. And one of the, the things that's important to know about the SHRED program is that it reimburses eligible salaries or subcontractor uh, expenses. So if you may have, you may be hitting that technical technological wall, as Dominic said, uh, but um, if it's just you developing that product then, and you're not receiving a salary from a company, right? Then you're you're not going to be able to reimburse those expenses to yourself, most likely, um, unless you're using a subcontractor. So there are those things to take into consideration, where um, depending on your stage, certain programs are more appropriate than others, um, and a lot of it has to do with company size um, for for a lot of them in Canada, actually. Um, so this is just to wrap up, kind of that uh, that uh, idea that. Um, you can find funding from a number of different places and we maintain Fundica with all of these groups involved. So entrepreneurs participate in the platform by creating their accounts. We have our team of dedicated researchers and the data team that maintains it. Uh, we use some uh, AI and uh, bot technology to help us as well. Um, we have advisors that are represented on the platform and some funders that put their own programs up by themselves. So this is everything that kind of goes on in the Fundica ecosystem, if you will. Um, and here you'll find uh, Dominique and I's uh, contact information uh, at uh, Fundica and RD Partners respectively, if you want to uh, talk more than uh, what we're going to be able to do on this call. Um, so yeah, don't that hesitate to get in touch. That was great, thank you. Um, we do have some questions, one of which you were already answering in the um, uh, chat room there, and I'm gonna answer to ask it again in a second so the people on YouTube and where else can uh, hear it. But my fr the first question we get came in from YouTube Live, and I'm gonna break it up into two parts. Uh, is Fundica Canadian focused? So, uh, yes. Currently, the platform that we have live is Canadian uh, focused, and there are. Uh, so, is this question from from someone in the U.S. Perhaps? Um, it's hard to say because the mm -hmm. question was, "Are you Canadian VC ecosystem focused?" So that's the second part of the question. So I kind of divided up into two. <laughs> okay. Um, so right now, our platform is. Um, ready for Canada and it has everything it has as I said earlier I think 97 percent of the funding programs for for-profit companies uh, in Canada represented um, and it's not VC focused so we, we really have different categories with grants tax you'll see later but grants tax credits loans loan guarantees uh, equity and other investments so anything or a recoupable interest or interest bearing or non-interest bearing investments in film production, for example. Um, and um, the final category is accelerators, incubators. So it's not VC focused by any means. We rep, we have a lot of VCs with a profile on Fundica and a, as a fund, as a funding program, but it's, it's everything is the idea. Um, and you mentioned in the, um chat room, but I'm going to say this here. There was one question saying, so you only help startups with cash in hand? So no, Fundica is open to any person with a business or even in the ideation stage, you can sign up on Fundica and look for funding for, oh, when I achieve this goal, uh, maybe I'll need this or, or that. So Fundica is free to use for entrepreneur users. Um, you don't need to have cash in hand to make an account on Fundica. Uh, that's just a way to be more prepared for, especially if you're going to go for for um, an investment that you have to repay, for example. Um, it's a good idea to have like cash in hand, but as I, as I wrote in my reply, it's not obligatory by any means. Uh, it's just a good backup to have in your, in your back pocket ready to help you get more of that funding. Now, uh, do you help with grant applications? Well, I think that's a question I should probably pass on to Dominique because Fundica does not help entrepreneurs with uh, their grant applications directly. We are a funding research tool. 
uh, but uh, you'll have more to say on that than I do, Dominic. Sure, and maybe just to, to add to the, the previous response, I think with the, do you need cash in hand to let's say work with us on the R&D partner side? I think it's more, have you incurred costs? Meaning have you paid salaries? Have you paid subcontractors? Have you, let's say paid for materials that then the tax credits could be, so to speak, uh, be credited against? And if yes, we have a case to explore this further. And if no, um, I'd say carry on in that sense. Then it's too early in that. Uh, to, you are still in the in the phase where you probably bootstrap and, and maybe um, like fund this without, let's say, having um, incurred those those costs. As I as I just said, for the grants application, yes, we focus mostly to be very clear on the. Flagship programs, as I said, the SHRED, the e-business tax credits, multimedia tax credits, there's a couple, depending on the province you're based in, um, they might differ, but we, we serve whole Canada uh, with R&D partners, that's important to mention, so yes, we can talk, and also for grants and uh, grants application, we tend to work with customers as well. So yes, is the answer. However, I think it can be sometimes just providing direction as part of a bigger mandate or working with you on an hourly basis, for example, to, let's say, help you get those files um, in and apply. Um, whereas the tax credits program is more of a longer engagement where we try to achieve a partnership over a longer time horizon. And it's a different business model, I'd say. Happy to comment as well if, if there's any interest. What, um, what's the cost of hiring R&D partners? The cost of hiring R&D partners, uh, I like the term of hiring us, uh, engaging with us as in a partnership, uh, it's great actually to hire us, it sounds good. As a consultant, um, it's generally speaking a contingency model. So we, we become partners, we carry the, the business risk, helping you claim, um, getting you structured. And then it's a contingency phase success fee at the very end of the day. And if people are interested in the percentages, I'd say the industry standard is that it varies somewhere, somewhere, somewhere around the 15%. And the higher the claim goes, the lower the percentage gets. Uh, as a very broad answer, very, very happy to go into specifics if, if there's anybody um, who has a follow-up question. Well, we do a couple, just two more Shred questions here. Uh, does Shred support uh, sales teams? Shred doesn't support sales teams. <laughs> that's important. That's the that's the non-eligible activities part that I referred to. That was more on the right-hand slide of the slides, uh, if, if Greg shares those after. Um, however, um, there's other programs where it could fall into, let's say, supporting activities. However, for the Shred program, sales activities aren't covered. That's very important. You can't um, make those count. And are subcontractors required to be in Canada for to receive the tax credit? It's important to under, to understand who can claim. I think that's the first question. So is it the is it only one can claim? I think that's the kind of the the, the rule number one. And then once you know who's going to claim, the subcontractors need to be the work needs to be performed in Canada. That's the that's the point of the Shred program. It's a Canadian programs so the work of the subcontractor needs to be performed in Canada if you outsource it or if you offshore that work it will unfortunately not be eligible only a very little amount for travel like up to 10 percent for an employee of his time spent so there's a few uh, let's say maybe tasks that could be but it's you need to really then look into the details of, of that very situation generally speaking it needs to be performed in Canada for the subcontractor Great. Um, we've got a couple of questions, but they're more related to the tool and, you know, what things are available. So if someone wanted sure. to share that and then I'll uh, start mentioning these things. And this is kind of the problems that people are having. Here's an example. Uh, as you're getting ready, we're a publishing service for self-publishing writers. We get annual shred money and have burned through our bank loan. We're launching in a few weeks been in talks uh, with Innovation Canada and Export Canada and are confused by the number of programs we might be eligible for. I mean, I think people look at how many different programs there are out there. How do you narrow them down? Um, does a tool help? Do I need to talk to you, someone like you, Dominic? How, how, what do I do? Yeah, I like the question and we get that a lot. And I think it's a real challenge uh, lots of entrepreneurs face because we will run a search and we'll get a lot of search hits. And then of course the challenge will still remain to how uh, as to how I go about those, let's say, available options. So with our expertise on the R&D partner side, we try to always, as part of our, let's say, service, 
look into all available options. We actually use Fundica as a tool ourselves. I mean, it, we're sister companies. So in that sense, we make use of the engine and of the comprehensive, let's say, um, program overview we have available. And then we'll go through the list and we'll try to prioritize instead of rather looking through all the 3,500 programs that are covered by Fundica, we'll try to break it down into the five to 10, top 10. And then we start to do the so-called stacking, trying to combine what makes the most sense given your particular situation. So yes, we help with that on the R&D partner side, Crack. And uh, we try to, of course, make sure we're having always a good balance between time spent for those applications and then programs claimed and or filed rather than, than filing for all and then having to cannibalize uh, each other and, and after maybe ending up with a bad or ROI for the, for the time you invest in those applications. We've got a couple more shred questions, but I want to get, we got the tool up. So let's, sure. people are dying to see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so do we want to go maybe with um, that uh, question about the publishing company? I think that that, that Perfect. Uh, we can start there. could be interesting to look at. Um, I would, so are you located in uh, Toronto by any chance, or do you want to give us your, I think Greg Ioannou, I think is, uh, is the person who asked this question. Um, yeah. If you want to share with us um, a little bit more information, as you can see, these are the criteria that Fundica needs to get the funding out. This is how we, um, we got Toronto. We got a postal code. Toronto M five one double two. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Uh, when were you incorporated, Greg? Two thousand eleven. Okay. Industries we're going to go with. So I read for self publishing uh, author, uh, self publishing writers. Is this kind of an online uh, publication service? Because um, I I will put publishing, but one of the the ways that we filter things on Fundica is that you can put more than one industry. You can actually go up to three, uh, which means that it allows for a better representation of those those intersections of different uh, industries, especially with uh, IT and um, digital media is a big one right now, obviously. Connect writers to editors, designers, marketers, etc. Okay, so I think I'll keep you in just publishing uh, for now. I think that makes the most sense. Um, unless you see something else that uh, would make sense. Yeah, and maybe just writers. while while you select right. those, Frederick, apologies, uh, how can after show how people navigate to to this very, let's say, sign up page. Uh, yeah, it's absolutely. simply fun, fundica.com. I think uh, it might be already in the chat somewhere, but fundica.com. And then I think you have sign up and then you select entrepreneur. And then you would end up at this sign up, let's say, screen that we're right now walking you through. And then you build your profile. And I think that's what we're right now doing, um, trying to select relevant industries, filling a couple of criteria to then inform the engine to hopefully come up with the with the programs we'll be looking at in a, in a second. That's right. Um, and this last question, it's uh, forks of revenue. So you don't actually have to, it's not the, the exact amount, but uh, a lot of these will have uh, programs for SMEs, for example, will have those, those limits on the revenue or for startups. So we'd like to include it as a criteria if... Uh, that's something that we can have, um, Greg. Can you scroll up a little bit? Oh, yeah. What's below 500K? None yet. Okay, not started, but we'll have in a few weeks. Okay, so we'll still put, we'll put you there to see what's available right now, um, and we shall see. Okay, so when you essentially get your results on Fundica, you're going to get these different uh, tabs. This is the way the, the website works. So I'll, I'll give it a quick little tour on the, with this first example. So we have our favorites. Uh, I'll just minimize this. We have our favorites, um, which basically you're going to be able to favorite programs, and they're going to end up here. As you're navigating Fundica, you can um, save those programs. That way you, you still have them in your account for later, and you can come back and reference them. Um, we always have these preloaded because they're the big ones right now. We obviously have the big uh, COVID um, um, programs up and uh, on that on that uh, sort of uh, page. So um, next, as I was saying earlier, I went through quickly these categories. So uh, the grants, the tax credits, the loans, the guarantees, the equity and other funding accelerators. And then we have some advisors that have a profiles on Fundica if you are looking for an advisor um, to uh, help you get that funding. Um, so the uh, grants that I'm seeing right now, so 
publishing companies in uh, Ontario. And I'm gonna pull up the chat again to get that extra detail. So this is what you would see in the grants. You already have shred money. Um, so you've been in talk with Export Canada, meaning that you want to export the service, you want to take it out of Canada or just a um, EDC um, fund general, just general funding from EDC. The service is intended for, okay. So the service is intended from you, for US customers is what you're telling me, Greg. So I'll go and that's a good occasion to show you some of our uh, secondary filters. But um, quickly, so you'll see, we have different tax credits that are available in Ontario, different loans, uh, government, as much as private lending um, that are available in Ontario, some loan guarantees, you see, you see right there, and then some equity funding. Um, at accelerators, they often have a, a um, cap on the number of years since incorporation, which would explain in this specific case why we're not seeing a lot of accelerators for your company. So as you can see, all of our criteria really sort of intersects with each other. Um, but right now, these are the secondary filters uh, that allow you to go and get more programs for the specific purposes that you are looking to fund. So what we're talking about with the different areas where you can put funding, um, no matter the type of funding it can go into, your hiring, export, uh, capital expenditures, and product development, right, as I was talking earlier. So this is where we find this kind of uh, filtering. So um, I'm going to check already um, exporting products or services, because that seems to be what you're looking for. Is there any information that uh, you can give me on the controlling shareholders? So we like to include these for um, uh, women and minority shareholders, because there are some programs uh, that are um, specifically targeted to uh, such uh, such uh, people with the business to encourage uh, bus the people from um, minority communities. Okay, two male, one female in the shareholders. All right, so we'll keep it a not a, um, this, it gets a little bit specific. A lot of them require 51% ownership in the business or more uh, for women. So if it's an employee, it doesn't, it's not a, a controlling shareholder as far as um, the members of the team are concerned. So I'll leave it like that for now. Um, it's good. Uh, and then you can see we have tons of other secondary filters um, that uh, allow for different types of uh, funding, uh, funding purposes. Uh, I, you've told me that you've already hired a co-op student, so that's where you would be finding those kinds of programs, like co-op uh, hiring subsidies for undergraduate and um, post-secondary interns, for example, and then the work terms, things like that. And you also have uh, hiring for permanent employees. So you can see we have tons of options, tons of ways to customize your search to uh, your specific needs. And uh, when you're actually using uh, Fundica, you can change those secondary filters as much as you want. It's your company profile that uh, eventually uh, doesn't, uh, um, basically you can play with those secondary filters as much as you want for different purposes for the same company, essentially. So if we're gonna look, I don't know if we got another grant here. So if you're looking for, okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna start opening some, some secondary tabs here. Uh, and keep going. So I don't know right now what I'm doing is I'm not um, familiar off the top of my head with every single program in Canada, obviously, uh, because there are so many of them. <laughs> um, so I'm looking through quickly to see what seems to kind of fit your profile from what I know about it. And then we're going to go through them and I'll be able to show you the one pager as well. Um, so in the loans, mostly recommending, so I, a, yes? No, I just wanted to give by some time here while you go through the programs. I think one, one important exercise is um, generally when you set up your profile within the Fundica engine, um, as you see, you get, of course, the more specific you are, hopefully the less programs that are relevant come out, but also you, you take the chance that you might exclude some given your filters. 
that you maybe would have been eligible for in the first place. So we recommend running a search and then using secondary filters, filters as needed. And also, of course, we unfortunately can't remove, we can make your life easier instead of having to go through 3,500, we have to go through, let's say a couple. Uh, sometimes it's in the teen, sometimes in the single digit, depending the industry you select. But I think it is a very valuable task. And again, we give you shortcuts. I think that's where we're getting to right now, how to then uh, see the criteria, where to apply, who to call, and basically where to, let's say, fill the form to, to get started with the program. It's more of a shortcut, I'd say, rather than removing the full work. When it comes to the R&D partner side, we use that engine. We're kind of familiar with the programs available and try to prioritize them to, of course, only discuss the ones where we believe um, it makes sense to, to move forward with uh, rather than going through all. So that's kind of to explain why there's still a, a lot of information to, let's say, digest once you uh, get the search result at first. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So what I'm seeing right now is that um, you want to export the service for American authors. Is that is that right? Because as far Um, because as far as, okay, you're not a traditional publisher, I see. Okay. Yeah. So I think that what does happen here is that when we look at what the, because this obviously, Fandika can only repertory what's available, right? And the government of Canada very much wants to incentivize the export of Canadian cultural um, sort of productions uh, abroad. Uh, so when we're looking at this, um, obviously, when we look at export programs in the publishing sector, this is one that comes up a lot because they want to get Canadian authors' books out, um, whether they're a uh, traditional, whether through a traditional publisher or not, right? So I think that that is something to keep in mind when we're um, looking at, but if, if it's an online platform, um, if, it, if so you say you're not a traditional publisher, if it's an online platform, I may be want to go back and make a quick modification to your profile and see if uh, IT or e-business maybe could help expand our results because that might be where we want to actually look uh, instead of the actual publishing as much as we want to have that available in our results. E-business is closer. Okay, sounds good. So we'll add that. So you can see that's the advantage of being able to put two companies um, at two industries, my bad. There you go. Okay, let's see what that looks like now. Okay, so we got some extra little um, uh, programs here. So let's check them out. And you'll see our secondary filter for export should still be activated. That's right. So we should see those. Is everybody getting the idea of how you got to play around a little bit, go into one industry and so oh, I'm more kind of related to this once you drill down and you surface all this information and how easy it is? If you could, it also, I would like to add as well that our, where we are um, available, uh, the Fundica team to um, help with uh, people's questions, especially on the technical side. Uh, but um, I'm always happy to get emails from people looking for funding and telling them, hey, I think maybe this would be a good idea. I try this. Um, so don't hesitate. Um, can't do the whole thing uh, because it does take some time, but we're always happy to give some advice um, when we can. So I got a quick question here about what is the pricing structure of the platform? I know you mentioned before, but you know, um, since people are joining late or whatnot. Yeah, so if, if you're an entrepreneur, Fundica is free to use. So that is one of the things that are important for us. Uh, there's no paywall uh, to use Fundica. Um, businesses uh, from the smallest startup to the biggest multinational can access this platform for, for free, uh, either from our data.fundica.com website that you're seeing right here, or from uh, subdomains with our industry partners. Um, so um, the, the, that is one of the things that are important for us. Um, this is a, a no cost service to the entrepreneurs. 
we seem to get some hits there as you were scrolling through. I see somebody saying, ooh, Shopify has loans. We've been talking to them ooh. about tech issues. So they're like, oh, they, different angles. Um, yeah. And a lot of comments about how helpful the the examples of the tool are. Um, and again, there's another question about, do you help companies apply for funding? Uh, so I'll, the quick answer from me is uh, we, Fundica does not help directly with funding applications. We give you access to the guidelines and application forms through our links, as well as the contact information of the funder, but it's very much the do it yourself approach. But Dom, if you want to build on that, uh, go ahead. I would, re I would need to repeat myself here. I think it's really, we look at your situation, our, our bread and butter, I'd say are the tax credit programs. And if it makes sense, and if you have an, let's say you went through those available options for grants and loans, we provide direction. If it makes sense and you want us to work on the application, we can do that as an add-on to the tax credit claim itself. But when it just comes to, uh, sometimes it's a starting point, an entry point, of course, I think it really depends on the situation, but it's not, um, let's say the majority of our work that we performed helping with grant applications. However, if it makes sense, and if you're having a business that could potentially, of course, grow with us in a partnership type of setup uh, to also go look into other tax credit programs, we will, would be willing to explore it further. And did you want to do another search example? Or do you think that was enough? Uh, we could get a, another one in here. Uh, let's see. I think we had another one in the Q&A, the You and Me ritual from yeah. Dipti Swain. Yeah, and it says Inter Industries Mental Health City of Toronto. And while you're getting to that page, I'll read what he said, what they've said here. And if Dipti oh, Dipti's not no longer in the chat room, so we're probably not going to get the answers we want from him. So, uh, uh, or unfortunate. Or, yeah, we could probably use one of your examples. And while you're getting that ready, I'll just, we had a couple of quick questions. Um, and you can correct me if I answer any of these wrong, Dominic. Um, what if you only make small revenue? Can you still get tax credit from SRED? Uh, SRED is a tax credit. So it has to do with how much money you're spending, not how much money you're making. 100%. Um, what is the percentage of a rebate you can get on shred per employee? And is there a maximum employee we can claim? Now you're going to correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, but it used to be 68 cents on the up to up to 68 cents on the dollar uh, for your employees. And it depends on the province you're in and stuff. It depends on the control of the company, Canadian control. That's I think an important one to, to get up to those percentages you just referred to, but yeah, that's in the right uh right area around the 65 plus minus. I think it always depends on get the full credit, but I think you're right, 65, 68 depends. It always worries how you how you stack, but um, yeah, sounds right. And is there an application fee or do they only pay once they get the rebate? For the shred program, yeah. there there is, I forgot to correct me if I'm wrong here, but I wouldn't be aware of an application fee per se. I know it, for other programs, there is fees with Investors Mark Quebec, for example. But for the Shred program, I would be taken by surprise here if there is a fee attached to it. Instead of, In addition to the time, of course, that is kind of you invest in that, in that sense. Yeah. Great. I just wanted to get through as many of those as possible. Over to you. Sure. <laughs> oh, I don't believe that there's a fee from the government to apply for the shred program, that would be like having a fee on any other tax credit, right? So uh, no, I don't, I, that wouldn't, there may, I don't wanna say for sure yes or no, but I, it would surprise me as well if there was from the government because it's tax credit. You don't apply for it as much as you claim it really. Go ahead, Greg, Craig, fire, fire away if you have more. No, mm -hmm. that's, I think we got all of them. That's why I'm, I'm I, I, I think okay. we have all of them. I'm just going to double check. Go ahead, Fred. Sure. Yeah. Um, so we can take a quick look. So I made a, a very generic sort of uh, artificial intelligence IT startup in Toronto uh, profile that's not based on anyone here. It's just a, um, a general idea. It'll give us a better idea also of the, I'll be able to show you more accelerators if, we, if anybody could be interested in those, just in the general IT uh, space, a lot of them are going to come up. But um as you can see, a lot of the grants uh, in Toronto and in uh, Canada in general right now, they're very much dominated by the COVID programs. Um, and uh, we like to highlight as well some of those super clusters uh, that have uh, started in recent years 
uh, that offer some interesting funding programs of their own uh, for such uh, things. So if this company is going through and they're, oh, I'm an, I'm an AI startup, oh, I'm going to take a look at the AI supercluster. Um, technically, the artificial intelligence supercluster is a Quebec organization. But or it's located in Montreal, Quebec, uh, the, the headquarters of Supercluster. But um, the programs are offered to uh, Canadian companies in general. Um, that is something I'd like to highlight here. Um, next, oh, we're going into those grants. So we'll be looking at so we can see this is grant funding in Ontario for technology challenges and research and development, uh, things like that. Uh, we have a lot coming from the Ontario Centers of Excellence, uh, always for technology innovation challenges, along with the uh, Encore uh, 5G uh, and other organizations like that. Those are some that I would take a look at as well uh, through developing um, apps, technological solutions. Those are good funders to keep an eye on. Because um, that is also another way you can use Fundica, right? Is that there may not be a program here for you right now that's a, a accepting applications. Those are things that happen, unfortunately. But you can find out about funders, investors, government programs that, oh, this could be right for my company. It's just not open right now. Or this is something where a program for my company could come from eventually. Um, so getting that knowledge of the Canadian funding landscape is also it's also valuable because you if, you if you do that research you'll be more prepared to jump on those opportunities when they do arise um, and are right for your company at the right place right time and right preparation those things all play into each other right um, so yeah so we have some um, big uh, uh, VC funds from across Canada and uh, the thing that I wanted to show is the incubators here. So if you're a tech startup in uh, in Ontario in general, the DMZ programs uh, are always good ones to look at. There's also Creative Destruction Lab that uh, shows up from time to time. Um, there it is. So uh, LSPARC's a big one in Ontario as well, as, as far as I'm aware of. They offer several different uh, programs. So getting to know those funders, getting to know those uh, support organizations is always a good thing as well. Uh, if you want to create a free Fundica profile and find out more about what's available, um, potentially. That was great. Yeah, I want to so thank you for your time. Sorry, keep going. Oh, I was just going to say that's a general overview of what's there for tech in Ontario. I know it's a big word, big implications, but I wanted to thank you for your time today. And uh, if you could put up the slide about where people could contact you to get more information if they want to absolutely uh, uh, find you. Um, we all do. I, unfortunately, I'm going to ask you this one more time because it's not clear for some people. <laughs> um, if working with R&D partners to do a SRED application as a main example. Yes. Uh, do we pay you to as the engagement or do you uh, get paid uh, when you receive a rebate? Exactly like the, the latter. So we get paid when you get paid, so to speak. Uh, it's it's um, We're carrying the business risk with you if you want to put it very simple. However, if you insist and you want to be charged on an hourly basis, we can also do that. And we, you, we can also invoice you upfront if you want, but generally speaking, it's exactly like you explained. Uh, you get the refund and a portion of that refund will be forwarded to us i hope that's that's clear i think that's clear i just um i just okay. want to make sure we keep getting the different questions no we're getting great important. yeah important and answer. we got great feedback from this presentation it was very helpful and just for uh people everyone listening uh they want to go to fundica where do they go uh so you can go to fundica.com very simply uh and click on sign up and create a free entrepreneur profile um today uh, we also, yeah, it's, we also have a, uh, some, some other interesting things coming in the next few weeks uh, with the uh, different uh, industry partners and uh, um, like what new, um, you, new, new places where you'll be able to access Fundica. I'll nice. Uh, hopefully you'll share some of that news with us so we can share with our audience. Um, and Dominic, if people want to work with R and D partners to do some applications or talk to you, where would they go? They would go to rndpartners.com or simply shoot me an email at decline at rndpartners.com. 
And um, again, I think what Frederic was hinting at, uh, Fandika as a tool will soon also be maybe a little uh, sneak preview here, be incorporated into the R&D partners website. So it's also then one of our, let's say, technology tools we'll be using on the R&D partners site to help our customers, um, just to back up what you just said, uh, among others, uh, let's say, places where it might be incorporated um, moving forward. Again, thanks for all the questions. It was very active in the chat room today. Thank you for all the answers and, and showing us the search tool. And we're right on time, one o'clock. Uh, thank you, everyone. This was a great, I love the tool. I love all the answers to R&T Partner and the SHRED program. Uh, we'll see you all again soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.